NASA simply switched off the live stream and thousands of viewers wondered what kind of object was crossing the sun. Once again, an inexplicable phenomenon appeared directly in front of the sun and NASA is obviously making every effort to ensure that nobody witnesses these unusual events. When images do appear in the media, strange objects and fast-moving spots are usually explained by satellites or bugs that are supposedly playing tricks in front of the telescope lens. But can this really be true? Or are we being loaded here for a very special reason? It's the order of the day. NASA repeatedly switches off live transmissions when strange things can be seen. This applies to the ISS cameras as well as to the live transmissions from the SOHO Solar Observatory. Allegedly, NASA then maintains the cameras or there are temporary outages purely by chance. Amateur astronomers and UFO fans have long since stopped believing these excuses. The shutdown is systematic, NASA critics agree. In May 2022, amateur researchers and official spokespeople from NASA and ESA argued about this suspicious phenomenon. The strange square was visible in the image for a few seconds, then the screen went black. A SOHO fan was able to react with lightning speed and capture the scene before it was switched off. The SOHO project is the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory of NASA and the European Space Agency ESA. The images provide an impressive view of the sun around the clock. The aim of the mission is to constantly monitor solar activity and to develop a warning system for violent solar storms and particle streams that could bombard our Earth's magnetic field. Unusual observations around the sun are reportedly not uncommon. After the interruption, the live stream of the sun was unavailable for a full eight hours in May 2022. The official reason was maintenance work. This was followed by a public statement from SOHO mission manager Bernard Fleck, in which the scientist very directly dispelled rumors claiming that a UFO may have been seen here and that NASA was trying to hide it. Fleck spoke of complete nonsense and explained that the square was the result of a damaged telemetry block, which had led to missing transmission data and ultimately to this conspicuous square spot. Despite the statement, the strange sighting continued to produce colorful blossoms in the media. Alien theories and crazy claims spread around the world like wildfire. Many of these accounts were of course grossly exaggerated, but we still have to ask ourselves why NASA always switches off cameras at the crucial moment and why they and the scientists involved always have an almost perfect explanation ready that categorically excludes paranormal phenomena. A camera error? Certainly not. Watch out right now for the small black spot that quickly passes in front of the sun. The object races past in front of the star at lightning speed. The anomaly crosses the image from left to right in an almost dead straight line and with astonishing accuracy. This image once again caused a stir among all those people who observe our sun and look for clues to mysterious and rare things. This discovery turned out to be a real stroke of luck for all UFO hunters. We can see the sun so well on the video because it has been extremely darkened. With the naked eye, we wouldn't be able to see objects like this passing by the sun in transit. But what was it? A UFO? Or just something that can be explained rationally? The official explanations for observations like this are birds, insects, satellites, or even image interference. We can clearly rule out image interference here. Light or data errors and reflections never move straight through the image. Birds fly in a completely different way and would not be traveling so purposefully and quickly. And the same applies to insects fluttering through the air. Could it be a planetary transit? In the excitement surrounding the sensational video, the idea of a Mercury transit quickly came up. This scene really does visually resemble a flyby of Little Mercury. However, more detailed investigations ruled this out as well. Mercury's transit orbits are quite different and the speed of the object also differs significantly from that of Mercury. Let's take another look at the possibility that we are dealing with a satellite here. This makes sense at first, but again, the detail reveals otherwise. The object takes too long to fly past. If it were a near-Earth satellite, the transit would be much faster. The length of the distance, the direction of flight, and the size of the object show that it must be further away from Earth than a satellite. It is also very large, because otherwise we would not be able to make it out in front of the gigantic Sun. If this answer is not consistent either, we are left with asteroids, comets, or space debris. But here too the trajectory, rotation, and size ratios measured in terms of speed do not match. 
It can't be the Parker Solar Probe either, because it would be tiny compared to the size of the Sun. That leaves one crazy explanation, and that would be the mysterious planet Vulcan. Anyone who loves Star Trek knows this planet as the home of the pointy-eared and super cool Vulcans. But what hardly anyone knows is that Vulcan really exists, or shall we say, existed. In fact, the planet Vulcan was a theoretical idea postulated in the 19th century to explain certain irregularities in Mercury's orbit. The idea goes back to the French mathematician Urban Jean-Joseph Le Verrier. As evidence, he cited Mercury's orbital irregularities, which were similar to those that Le Verrier had used shortly before to reveal the existence of Uranus. Le Verrier called the suspected planet Vulcan. He and other astronomers tried to observe this hypothetical planet, especially during solar eclipses, in order to reduce the brightness of the Sun and thus increase the visibility of objects in its vicinity. It is exciting to note that astronomers observed several objects during this time that were thought to be Vulcan. However, the planet was never confirmed to be real. The open question of the precession of Mercury's perihelion was finally solved by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. But today, we do not know what exactly the astronomers observed when they thought they saw Vulcan. It is also possible that it was precisely such objects that we wonder about today. It should burn but it doesn't. Here we have another overwhelming image of the glow and seething of the sun, the streams of fire, the flickering and the power of the tremendous upheavals on our star immediately cast a spell over the observer. But what is it? Here we see another object in the image of the solar observatory for which there were flimsy explanations. It only becomes visible if you zoom in extremely close to the image, which explains why the cameras kept rolling in this case. It almost seems as if there are people who have a sixth sense for discoveries like this, and then fortunately share them with less observant people. This object doesn't look like it's missing any data. It's round, with almost symmetrical round thickenings. It might look a bit like a hair on a lens, but it's too uniform for that. The conspicuous wobbling of the part is also very strange, as if it were moving or fluctuating. What could this mean? A sensor error would be possible, but the object is actually moving too intensively for that. An error would be more static in the image, but this thing looks more like it is being moved by the sun's emissions. Another fact that suggests that the object is in the direct vicinity of the sun is that the mysteriously ring-shaped object only becomes visible when we zoom into the image. An error on the lens or in its direct vicinity would be visible uniformly the whole time. If this object is really so close to the sun, we need to be aware of the scales and ambient temperatures. In the wider surroundings of the Sun, the so-called corona, the temperatures are far higher than near the surface of the Sun. Whether in the corona or closer to the surface, in both cases we are talking about temperatures of between 5,000 and over 1 million degrees. A normal object made of matter can therefore not actually be close to the Sun. Our Parker Solar Probe flies through the solar corona several times over the course of the entire mission approaching up to about 6.16 million kilometers and having to withstand temperatures of around 1,377 degrees Celsius. The probe then flies around the sun again in a wide arc, recovers, and then approaches it again. It is a technical masterpiece that the probe can withstand this. The construction is made of a highly heat-resistant carbon composite material, and the sensitive parts are protected by special solar shields and by being turned away from the surface of the sun. If this object wafting in front of the sun is not material, what is it? We will probably never know. How likely are UFOs in front of the sun? Let's shed some light on the exciting question of how likely UFOs are in the vicinity of the sun, or how likely the real existence of flying saucers are in general. So far, there is no real evidence. There has never been a tangible, palpable, or traceable flying saucer on this Earth or in the surrounding area. Astronauts on the ISS regularly report strange and inexplicable sightings in the vicinity of the space station, but no one has ever officially seen a real UFO with aliens. The UFO-like objects and sightings are astonishing. Most of them are geometric light patterns, shadows that indicate objects hidden in the dark with weak lighting, or suspicious movements. The same phenomena also appeared around SpaceX space shuttles. Again, the objects or lights are not identifiable. They are not clearly UFOs or spaceships, but phenomena for which there is no known explanation. 
On Earth itself, there are dozens if not hundreds of UFO sightings every year. Eyewitnesses report seeing both UFOs and aliens. Among the best evidence for the real existence of the craft are video recordings from the US Navy and other global military organizations. The jets of the fighter pilots are equipped with automatic airspace scanning. If these sensors detect a strange missile, an alarm is triggered immediately. In this way, a number of unidentifiable flying objects have now been filmed very well. Their movement patterns are similar in many respects to the flight behavior of the object that crossed the sun. Subscribe to the channel now and be part of every new video.